The following contest is a third round match in the Kings of Consoles tournament to determine the greatest game in the history of the Nintendo Entertainment System. Two games enter, only one can advance. Introducing first, the 43rd seed, a 1990 platformer from Tecmo, Ninja Gaiden 2, The Dark Sword of Chaos. And its opponent, the 11th seed, a 1990 role-playing game from Square, Final Fantasy. Your ringside judges are Pat Dooley and Ricky Giraldo. There's nothing left to say but round three. Fight! <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 73 of Kings of Consoles. This is the podcast where we're trying to find the best game for each home video game console by means of giant tournaments. Uh, as I mentioned, this is episode 73. We are nearing the halfway point of round three of our Nintendo Entertainment System tournament. And today we're going to see the number 11 seed Final Fantasy as it takes on number 43 Ninja Gaiden 2 The Dark Sword of Chaos. I'm Pat Dooley. And I'm Ricky Geraldo. And yeah, so we've uh, we've got four of our Sweet 16 all set now. Uh, we're about to add a fifth. Uh, pretty wild that we have so far only had one matchup go the way it was expected to. The four games that have advanced are the fourth seed, the 41st, the 46th, and the 81st after last week's massive upset of Journey to Silius beating Mega Man 3. Uh, we're what an upset. A huge upset. Actually, it was going to go the other way, but you convinced me at the last second uh, to go with Silius uh, based on, you know, what you said last week, you know, if we're going to play another hour of either of these games, I would rather play another hour of Silius rather than continue my Pacifian quest to get through uh Battle Man's level to fight Woodman again. <laughs> yep, exactly. And hey, I think we did a good choice. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. I feel good about it now. Uh, but hey, speaking of uh, overly difficult games, the underdog this week is Ninja Gaiden <sighs> 2 The Dark Sword of Chaos, uh, which has just kind of squeaked through to the third round. Uh, it beat Mickey Mousecapade back in episode 28 in round one. Uh, and then five weeks ago, it beat Blaster Master in episode 68 to get here. Uh, it is a 1990 platformer from Tecmo. Uh, it is the last game in the tournament remaining from Tecmo, which started with, I believe, four games, both Ninja Gaiden, Tecmo Super Bowl, and Tecmo World Wrestling. Uh, Ninja Gaiden 2 is the last one standing. Uh, it was directed by Masato Kato, programmed by Yoshiaki Inose, written by Sarah H, Hideo Yoshizawa, and Masato Kato, with art by Masato Kato, and music composed by Ryuichi Nita and Mayuko Okamura. After Jackio's defeat in the first game, Ashtar, Lord of the Realm of Darkness, decides to use the evil Dark Sword of Chaos to engulf the world in darkness. Why he didn't do that before is never explained. An American agent named Robert P. Sturgeon calls upon Ryu Hayabusa, who beat Jackie O a year earlier. IGN calls it the 43rd best game for the NES. Games Radar has it 20th on their list. And in 1997, Nintendo Power called it the 49th best game of all time, regardless of Nintendo platform. Austin Shaw from GameSpot calls both Ninja Gaiden games, quote, mean-spirited, but he does say that uh -uh. the sequel is slightly easier. Uh, and Lucas Thomas from IGN said it was, quote, a challenging experience, the likes of which gamers in the 8-bit era lived and died for. I would argue that that's because that was literally all we had, but, you know. It, yeah. And this is, this game is probably, so one of the, yeah, probably one of the hardest games we played. Yeah. I, think, I don't know. I think we said that last time. Like, this was just hard, man. I came as close as I've come through 73 episodes of quitting before the hour was up. Um, <laughs> I didn't, keeping my, my streak alive. 
Uh, is, this a, I, is this a two-player game? I don't think it is. For some reason. I thought it was. But anyway, uh, Ninja yeah. Gaiden 2. I mean, it's kind of crazy that even the newest Ninja Gaiden games are super hard. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, just part of the part of the franchise at this point yeah it really is what you expect it really is it's like it's brand yeah um it also you know having played you know through the first four weeks of of round three you know metal storm excite bike ninja turtles 2 bionic commando mega man 2 little samson journey to silius mega man 3 I just don't feel like this game belongs here anymore. Like, I don't think it should have got this far to begin with, um, but it did luck out, you know, coming across Mickey Mouse Cabade and Blaster Master. Some of these games, you know, Mega Man 2 is a great example. You brought it up. Like, Mega Man 2 is super hard, but it's also really fun. This, yeah, I agree. at least to me, is just hard. Yeah, this yeah. It's just it's a it's like like hard is okay with games. Oh yeah. But being cheap is not. Yes. And this this game feels like I want your money, I want your uh-huh. quarters. Yeah. <laughs> and this wasn't even an arcade game yeah. first. It's just Exactly. It's just the way games were built back then. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, I mean this hits pretty much every trope that I hate in games. Like it's got the the jumpy enemies. It's got you know projectile enemies that can attack you from angles where you can't hit them first. So you have to take damage. Like those stupid birds. Um, it has like you know easily like tiny platforms that you can easily be knocked off of. It's got that stupid blizzard in level two two. Yeah, and then it has like the stupid like when the wind changes. Yeah, that's the thing. It has like when you have to jump, there's things that like interrupt your jump, and that's uh-huh. always annoying. <laughs> and, uh-huh. Ah, overall, it is a classic Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, Ryu Hayabusa. You know, it's one of those like stables, mm-hmm. but I agree, it is not fun to play. No. <laughs> it is. Not fun. I remember uh, you texted me that you had to stop playing. I had uh-huh. to stop playing because I got yep. raged out of yep. my mind to the point where I couldn't. I couldn't sit. I couldn't move. I couldn't like pass on. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I was so bothered that yeah. even if I tried, I was like, <laughs> I had to pause the game at about the thirty-two minute mark and just walk away for about a half hour, just because I just couldn't look at that game anymore (laughs) it just wasn't i was not having fun anymore and it's like well that's that's silly like the whole point of this show was you know we wanted to do this because we wanted an excuse to play old video games with our friend and uh it's no fun if you're just getting your butt kicked for an hour yep so that that's our take on uh (laughs) ninja gaiden 2 Yep. So, Final Fantasy. Uh, Final it, Fantasy. It is a 1990 RPG, same year as Ninja Gaiden 2. Uh, the role-playing game developed by Square and published in the States by Nintendo. Uh, it was directed by Hironobu Sakaguchi, p- produced by Masafumi Miyamoto, programmed by Nasir Gabelli, written by Hironobu Sakaguchi and Kenji Terada, and designed by Hiromichi Tanaka, Kitoshi Kawatsu, and Koichi Ishii with art by Yoshitaka Amano and a score composed by, say it with me, folks, Nobuo Uematsu. Oh, legend. It's going to make a Final Fantasy score. Uh, it did get a buy in the first round of the tournament, so we didn't play it until episode 47 when it knocked Ghosts and Goblins, another prohibitively difficult game <laughs> out of the tournament. Uh, yeah, yep. so... Four heroes from one of six classes, fighters, thieves, black belts, and red, white, or black mages, each carrying an orb that represents one of the four classic elements, must rescue the Princess Sarah from the evil knight Garland, which then sets off a series of events that, because it's Final Fantasy, 
culminates in them battling an archdemon to destroy a time looping paradox that grants him immortality. Uh, since its initial yeah. debut in Japan in 1987, the game has been released 19 times on platforms like the Famicom, NES, MSX2, Wonder Swan Color, PlayStation, Game Boy Advance, on mobile, PSP, Wii's Virtual Console, the PlayStation Store, iOS, Windows Phone, Android, the 3DS Virtual Console, the Wii U Virtual Console, the Nintendo eShop, and as part of the NES Classic. Combined, the game has sold over 2 million copies. Ooh. You really that has to be one of the... Sorry, oh, that has yeah. to be one of the highest selling games we've played. It, other yeah, than unfortunately, like, it doesn't the quite main. count because those numbers are across all 19 versions, not just the NES. <laughs> that is fair. That is fair. So it doesn't... It, it, the Speak NES game by itself doesn't crack the top 100, uh, which is the biggest list I've been able to find. Now, the original working title of the game was Fighting Fantasy, but there was already a tabletop RPG with that name, so it had to be changed. According to Uematsu, it was changed to Final for two reasons. One, Sakaguchi would likely have quit the industry if the game had failed, and two, Square was on the verge of bankruptcy, so if the game had failed, it would literally have been their final game. Sakaguchi disputes part of this, saying, quote, it was definitely a back-to-the-wall type situation back then, but any word that starts with an F would have been fine. So he just liked the FF alliteration, couldn't get fighting, so he went with final, but also apparently it could have actually been final if <laughs> things had turned out differently <laughs> for Square. It turned out to be one of the greatest franchises uh -huh. in game history. Yep. yep. They <laughs> and one of the most recognizable names. So it's yep. kind of crazy. Yep, what, there have been 15 mainline games plus, you know, yes. sequels and spin-offs and, and, you know, there's racing games and uh, fighting games. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yep, and uh, it has, like, strategy games. right now the most successful MMO, it uh -huh. looks like of all, not all time, but it's... I, say, I, th I think World of Warcraft <laughs> it's still has it beat, but it's... Yeah, it's, it's getting up there. It might be the number one console uh mmo yeah even at this point like world of warcraft right now is struggling to keep up with Pe people are playing final fantasy 14 so much that they stopped selling it digitally <laughs> really yeah because people they couldn't the servers couldn't keep up with how many people are playing the game oh my gosh it is that insane final fantasy 14 right now that so wild Final Fantasy, man. I, I'll be honest, it's one of my favorite franchises. Uh, but I'm going to be honest. Okay, this might be... <laughs> and it could be because the way we're playing the NES version, the original game, mm -hmm. I don't think it's the way to go. <laughs> it is a little rough. <laughs> I would agree. Um I do think, like, for the era, for 1990, what it does is incredible. incredible. But you also have to compare it to... Because we also played Dragon Warrior, Dragon Warrior 3, Dragon Warrior 4 as part of this tournament. And I would say at least two of those three are better than this. They, you know, Dragon, you know, Dragon Quest is what we call it now, but on the NES it was Dragon Warrior. I feel like that... Um, that franchise kind of hit the ground running. Uh, whereas Final Fantasy kind of, it wasn't really until, what, probably three that it really became like what we think three, of yeah. as Final, or, you know, Japan three, US six, of what we think of as Final Fantasy. Like this has, you know, a lot of the, the, the hallmarks of it. Um, but it also, I noticed more so playing this time that, it really, really plays like just a tabletop RPG with animation. It does, yeah. Like it's very like class based, like your armor, your weapons, all of that is based on your class. You know, the magic you can learn is based on your class. Like it's not, you know, like compare that with like the original version of seven, uh, not, not so much the remake that, uh, that came out last year or two years ago. But the, like with the, like the materia system and all of that, 
how you could kind of like adjust your build within the characters but it wasn't like you know cloud is a ninja and barrett is a barbarian and you yeah know, Tifa is a cleric or whatever there was nothing like that they were just characters that you could you know kind of build on these are straight up like oh those three are magic users they can only use martial weapons like they can't they can only wear cloth armor he can wear chain but it's going to slow him down it's very very tabletop-y um, yeah I feel it like definitely they is they started to get away from that in in uh you know by the time the super nintendo rolled around well i feel like i mean 1990 i mean what what year did D came out definitely in the 80s right oh I'm sure i think dnd has been around since the 70s yeah um, so i feel like you know like say they have it but i feel like the, the guys who made this is like we like dnd oh we, yeah I'm, I'm sure it's heavily influenced yeah 1974 was the original version uh, AD yeah. and D came out in seventy-seven, and I'm sure they're like, "How can we translate D and D without the books, without all that?" Mm-hmm. And this is what happened. I mean, yep. this is like the start of RPGs. I don't think it's the first ever RPG, no, but it's definitely one that mastered, mm-hmm. and what yeah. really is an RPG. Yeah, for sure. This and Dragon Quest are kind of the two that you know put it on the map as far as as home console games being a, like a viable option goes yeah actually the the first rpg is dungeons and dragons so that's kind of funny <laughs> yeah it's uh you know in, in 1990 they were probably playing ad and d second edition which now we're you know everyone well not everybody but most players are playing fifth edition now just yeah. you know, how long between helps like you know AD and D came out in 77 second edition came out in 89 then 2000 before the third edition uh, role players tend to be a little set in their ways when it comes to not updating their games but there's been a movement lately to try and contemporize games and uh, I feel like the Final Fantasy franchise has done that for decades um being a little more on the progressive side like seven literally starts with you as a member of an eco-terrorism cell uh blowing up a factory that's causing environmental damage um run by an evil corporation all right well (laughs) it's true go 1997 square (laughs) they they knew they they knew they did they did shinra amazon (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> uh but but yeah i if you were to play a final fantasy one i suggest getting newer versions like i know there's one that came out earlier this week i believe or that's like a remake of one yep and there was also and, a pretty uh, recent uh one and two released together yeah um, on switch i think right in the eShop. yes so i i and those i looked that up and they the graphics are updated. Mm-hmm. They all play more like three and four. Mm-hmm. And that's just the way to go. Yeah. They got updated for a reason. The, mm-hmm. the uh, RPG yeah. this early in the game, it's a little rough. It's a little yeah. boring because mm-hmm. you're not <laughs> you're not doing much. It's really yeah. so yeah. Yeah, it's kind of got the, it's got the bones of a really good uh RPG, but it's not. The execution wasn't quite there in 1990, but it's been kind of cleaned up uh, in more recent remakes. Um, yeah, I mean, it's still, you know, for what it is and for the time, it's still really good. Um, but when you compare it to where the genre has gone, it's, it's, it doesn't yeah. get off to a great start. Um, yep. I... You know, I was playing off of my previous save from when we played it uh, back in episode 47. Yeah. Uh, and just had no idea where I was or what I was doing um, and wound up getting TPK'd 20-ish minutes in uh, because I was just kind of wandering aimlessly and I wound up in a... Uh, just a part of the map is like, oh, I'm clearly not ready for this yet <laughs> because yeah, all, of the, all of the monsters just destroyed me. So I wound up just creating a new party and kind of starting over, um, which I also forgot 
it's like you start off in the castle and you go and talk to the king he's like go rescue my daughter the princess and you're like oh okay and then you leave the castle and you go up on your adventure i forgot that the town you can go to the town that's right outside of the castle to like buy armor and weapons and uh yep. and magic <laughs> and stuff so i was like level one unarmed no armor and really the only place you can go when the game starts is into this cave where you immediately fight garland who is the oh one my that God. the princess he's... and he's so hard especially if you have no weapons or armor uh so i got tpk'd again <laughs> about <laughs> 10 minutes later so i really only had about 25 ish minutes of really playing the game knowing what i was doing um and I also, I will totally admit, I did what I do when I play D and D, and I will have you know player's handbook or at the very least an app in front of me. Um, I had a strategy guide open just so that I could see like what classes could wield what weapons and what armor they could have, because the first time after that first TPK when I went and the, my first time through the shops. I was like, okay, well, I'll just buy the best of everything. I was like, okay, well, they can't equip that, so I'm going to have to sell that back. Um, and I wound up just wasting a whole bunch of money. So I did oh, no. cheat. And we'll get into it when we talk about, you know, um, when we get into who made it farther. But I, de I definitely played it probably how I would have in 1990. I just would have had a paper strategy guide in front of me. Uh, but I just... Well, let's talk about it. Let's see who made it farther. Ninja Gaiden 2. Screw this game. Um, <laughs> so mad. Yeah. I made it to the level 3 boss with about 15 minutes left in the hour. My friend. No further. Me too. 3-3 three, three boss. Yep. I hate that stupid boss uh -huh. so much. Yep. Oh yep. my God. I can't believe we made it to the same place. I hate him so, so much. With his it's little like like, jetpack thing. and Yeah. It so it looks like a skull. Uh-huh. He looks like, oh my God. He's just dropping like little... Let's just grab a little bombs on like. it. Yeah, he's uh, just like uh, it looks kind of like the. Um, well, it's been a, a while since I played it, but if memory serves, it reminded me of like the shrine of the silver monkey from Legends of the Hidden Temple, but with rocket boosters on it. Um, so it's just like this like gray thing flying around, dropping weapon, dropping uh, projectiles on you. Yeah, it's the Two worst. Three. The worst. Not have pictures. Flying silver demon is what the the boss is called. It's the absolute worst, guys. Like, yeah, it's I really awful. There's... I can't tell. If I'm reading a walkthrough of the NES version or the like the PlayStation version. Either way, it's so hard. So so hard. And uh, yeah, that's funny that we both got stuck in the exact same place. Yep um so final fantasy how far did you make it there so final fantasy you can't really don't really know but i know the last thing i fought was a shark <laughs> so it was in the ocean okay so you had like you had gotten the ship and you were yeah i was on my way i was on the ship and i was just uh -huh. swimming on it and then i just ran into a shark which was kind of hard to fight mm-hmm yeah, that was where I was before my TPK. I was on the, the boat not knowing where I was going and just kind of sailing around looking for a port. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know that it was a shark necessarily, but it was that same kind of like, oh, I'm, I am not ready for wherever I am. Um, and uh, just got yeah, it to me. So the time ran out on my whatever third or fourth <laughs> playthrough where... Uh, I had finally taken the time to like look up what I could and couldn't do. Yes, the since just drafted Cade Cunningham. Uh, yep. <laughs> very excited. Excellent choice. Yep. This dates it by a week, but yes, we are 
we are recording this during the NBA draft and it just started and the Pistons made the right <laughs> call. Hopefully. Hopefully. Here we go, Pistons. A... Good job, Pistons. Now let's see what Here's we're going to do with all that cap face after trading away Plumley. <laughs> but yeah. Yes. Final Fantasy. So I had pretty difficult. I, I had like yeah. I had stocked up. I had beaten Garland. The king had opened up the bridge to the next area, which, if memory serves, is where you go to fight the pirates and get the ship. Um, but you were you were farther than me, so that is a point for you. All and right, it expands okay. to four. So I guess. I need to pick a winner. Um, we, you know, we always ask online, a couple of Facebook groups and our own Facebook page and our own Twitter feed. Two thirds of the people that responded picked Final Fantasy. Um, man, I, I am inclined to agree. Um, it's I, not, it's not what the franchise should be or would become, but. Uh, it's it, at least in my book, it's 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 worlds better than Ninja Gaiden Two. I agree. Final Fantasy is to pick. All right. Well, that means that I mean, let's be honest. Final Fantasy is not going to make it any farther than the round of sixteen, because now it means it's going to be facing the winner between Metroid and Kirby's Adventure. Well, uh, I mean, so. you never know. You never know. Journey to Silius. Who would have thought it would have beat Mega Man 3? But here we That's are. True. That so, true. So <laughs> maybe next week we're like, man, I don't yeah. think this game could take it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe we will find out that, you know, uh, on that, you know, third hour, those games just don't hold up. I doubt that, but maybe. Maybe. It could happen. Uh, so next week we will be. Speaking of difficult RPGs, we will be playing the number two seed in the tournament, The Legend of Zelda, as it takes on the lowest seed remaining in the tournament, number 95, Mega Man 4. Uh, but before we let you go, before we get into the plugs, we do still have Ryan O's question of the week, which uh, is, if there were an adulting video game, which virtual chore would be absolute hell to do? Huh. Um, for me, in terms of like the thing around the house that I hate doing the most is mowing the lawn. Um, I feel like that wouldn't be so hard in a video game because it would just be moving back and forth. But I could also see like if you wanted it to accurately represent what it's like to mow the lawn with a push mower, you could do like you know, death stranding style walking where you're like <laughs> having to adjust over every little bump and stuff in the yard and your like sweat meter is going up because there's a heat index of 103 while you're out there. And well, you live at sort of toward the bottom of a little sloped area. So all your neighbor's crap blows into your yards. So you're having to like kick coat cans out into the street so you don't run it over with the mower. Uh, mine, see, I have a love and hate relationship with this. Uh, I hate washing dishes. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's pretty bad too. Like, I, like I like doing it sometimes when I just listen to a podcast and just go with it, but man, I sure take my time when to do it. So my thing mm. would probably be like, if you don't do it fast enough, that's it. Time runs out. Like you do it like a speed run. It's like one of those, how fast can you wash the dishes? That's what I would do. <laughs> do like uh, in the, like all those, like the restaurant games where you're like having to, you know, hustle exactly, like yeah. other orders, except you're like, I'm scrape the cheese off like, the plate I'll, that I had pizza on. Uh, what's the game? Overcooked. It's like overcooked. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have, you, you have to do the dishes and I'm like, oh God, give me away. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the sushi ready or something. <laughs> so yeah, that's my thing. Much. Yep, that's a that's an excellent choice. And an excellent question again, Rhino. You always come with the good stuff. Thanks, uh, Rhino. So again, next week we are talking Legend of Zelda and Mega Man 4. 
uh, for another spot in the Sweet 16. You can see the full bracket at challenge.com slash kings of consoles, uh, where we update that every week. So you can see now Journey to Silius has advanced. Next week, you will be able to see my fantasy. Uh, we have a coffee account, ko-fi.com slash kings of consoles. If you, you know, feel like uh, throwing a little money our way so we can buy that uh, special edition of Metal Storm. I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, Facebook.com slash kings of consoles. We are at kings of consoles on Twitter. I'm at loopy date. Now I'm at Ricky G and seven. You can email us kings of consoles pod at gmail.com. And of course you can rate, subscribe, review, all that good stuff, all that good podcasty goodness. Uh, that you should have heard from us for the last 73 weeks, but I just frequently forget to mention that you should do those things. But it does help. The, you know, the more ratings and reviews and subscribers we have, the higher we show up in searches uh, and, and more people hear us. And we are <laughs> 26 weeks away now from crowning a king, which means that this this crazy thing that we started right at the beginning of the pandemic we're we're a half a year away. We are six months away from from having a champion, and that's just that's wild to think about. Um, awesome. But before that, we got to get through the rest of round three, and then four, and then five, six, and seven. Uh, so stay with us, folks. Zelda Mega Man Four next week, uh, and until next week, play old games. Play old games, everyone. Kings of Consoles is recorded in Nashville and Orlando and is produced and edited by me, Patty Lee. Thanks to Captain Portal for our theme song, intro for a non-existent video game, which can be found at freemusicarchive.org. And the music and sound effects from this week's games can be found by the great Google search. The opinions expressed in this and every episode are our own, and we are in no way sponsored by or affiliated with Nintendo. We're just big fans.